What's up guys? My name is Dawson with Hound Hogs Barbecue and today we're smoking some butts. So it's early morning. Um, I'm not gonna be super loud at the moment because my wife and kid are still sleeping. Um, it's about seven-ish. The smokers already started warming up. I'm gonna get some rubbing these butts. That way they can sweat in for a minute while it finishes getting to heat. And then I'm gonna go over that as I do it. Uh, let's get this thing going. So this is actually the night before. You guys know I'm doing three pork butts. The money muscle on probably the smallest one right here. And the biggest one right here are a little bit different in size. So when you're doing a pork butt, pretty simple. Not everyone cuts the fat cap off. I do. So we, all you really want to do is you want to take fat cap off. And as you're doing this, you'll find some silver skin under it. You can cut the silver skin off. Or... What we've actually done, it's worked out pretty well before, is actually just score the silver skin multiple times. But you're not trying to get rid of all the fat. The fat renders down and gives it flavor. Now, things like this can be cut off. You can put this to the side somewhere. You can save it for doing another meal because you put that in the smoker like that and it's going to just, it's going to become a little burnt, crispy piece of charcoal. This is the money muscle. Now, if there ends up being some of the best eating on a pork butt, usually right up here by the bone, you're also going to find this little guy. Make sure you can see it pretty well. Yeah. That right there is actually an artery. You can sometimes grab those and pull them out. You can also always give it a little bit of help. As trimming it right there I'm gonna run my knife over this a few times just to cut any silver skins but this part I'm gonna be doing an injection into these um, and that's one of the things I kind of wanted to let sit overnight now the injection is super simple I use apple juice and brown sugar um, that's really about it. Um, you can kind of tell there's a little bit more to this. Recently I started using a little bit of our rub. You want to go in until it about comes out. And I try and go in about a one by one grid. This is also why I always wear an apron during this part. Because I always have apple juice on me afterwards. <laughs> guys so when it comes to rubs I'm just doing two things I'm gonna do a layer of salt and then our actual rub now the reason for that is because we made our this is kind of a homemade hound hogs rub it's extremely similar to just about anything else you can buy that's a good all-purpose kind of pork rub um, but we didn't add salt to it so that we can control salt so that's the only reason I'm doing a salt But this, all right. 
So I usually go probably a little too heavy. Some people this say is what it looks like. The rub that has a lot of the pepper and everything in it that's gonna, or the peppers, I should say. The heat that's, that's gonna, gonna actually bring out heat. Whereas things like that, apple juice that I inject. So I've got these all rubbed up and salted. Now I'm just waiting yeah. on the smoker to actually well, finish, uh, come up to temperature and start burning nice and clean. Until then, I'm gonna let these rubs and the salt sweat into the meat um, so it really grabs onto it. So I've got all three of them on here. This is a Weber Smoky Mountain, so it's got a lower rack down there where I put the bigger one, so it's gonna set down a lot closer to the actual heat source down there. Um, I'm using some cherry wood chunks today because cherry is a good flavor for things like pork butts. Um, it gives a little bit of a sweeter flavor. You can also use oak and hickory things. It's all personal, personal preference, but I've always found I like cherry. Um, other than that, I'm gonna get this thing closed up so the smoke kind of cleans up a little bit more. And uh, then I'm basically not gonna be checking on this thing for the next few hours. It's been running at just over 300, which is perfectly fine for today. Um, that's about it. All right, so it's been about two hours since these things have gone on. Um, we've been holding pit temp. Well, that's wrong now, of course, <laughs> things open. We've been holding close to 250, 270. Um, kind of bounce around in that range, which is about perfect for what I'm shooting for. I know it was that 300 earlier. I'm actually glad it came down a little bit. Now, if you notice, as this this uh, starts to, the bark starts to set on here, this rub starts to dry out, and you don't really want it getting too dry. So what we do is we take, this is a, a, a mixture of 50-50 of apple cider and water. And you just come out here and you just want to stretch it. That's working a little better. And you just want to wet, just wet it back out. You want to watch out for any spots like this where it's getting a little darker than the rest. It's not really going to be a big issue, especially with backyard cooking. And then it's going to be real hard to uh, film spritzing the one down there. So, I'm just going to leave it at this while I get my gloves on and actually uh, get that one down there. Alright. So now, by the t I typically, once I start spritzing these, I check them about every 30 minutes or so to see if they need to be spritzed. I just wet these down a little bit and you can already see it's starting to dry out a little bit. But what you're looking for after you're doing this for a while is you want to check to make sure the bark is set. And basically what you do is you take your finger or anything that is kind of scrapey a little bit and you just kind of want to rub it. And you see how the, the rub's not really, it really isn't rubbing off or anything. With the bark, this typically happens around the time the meat hits about 160-ish degrees. Um, and at about that point, that's when it's not gonna start, it's not gonna keep taking on smoke flavor anymore. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prep the stuff on the counter so that I can get these things wrapped and get them back on here and finish them out. got these things wrapped got them back on there the big one's still in the bottom closest to the fire um i've actually run you probably just barely tell it's in there you can see that uh that probe that i put in there it's running um and wouldn't you know it the biggest one's at just under 150 at the moment uh which is pretty close to what i said it should be so these are wrapped now the smoker is basically a convoluted oven so i'm just going to keep them warm and let these things finish until i get to the point that i'm going to start checking them for doneness other than that, I mean, that's about as easy as it gets. Also, guys, I just want to throw in here. Um, we're trying to grow a little bit of a channel, a little bit of a presence. So if you guys like this recipe, if you guys end up liking the way these looks, if you think the video was pretty good, if you think I should grow my beard longer, then what you need to do is you need to leave a like. Uh, if you would, please just hit subscribe, uh, like, dislike. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Leave us a comment and tell us like what we should do next. 
Um, tell us what things you like about the videos, what things you don't like, anything, everything. It's all appreciated. It takes almost no time from you and it would help us out a ton. So just some good feedback and right, likes. Now. So these things, um, my probe on the bottom one's telling me this bottom butt down here is about 205, which about 200 is when I'll, start, I'll come out and I'll start checking them for doneness. So what I'll do, I'll get myself an instant read thermometer. It looks crazy on camera. All right, and when I'm doing this, and I get down into that meat, I can tell this top one right here is reading about 196. This one's a little over 200. But I'm not so much checking for what temperature the top ones are really at. Over 200 is where you're going to start running into things that are really getting kind of done. But I'm checking for the doneness. I can tell like this one right here, I could tell you it was under 200 by it. It's a little tough. When I, when I put this little needle into it, what I'm shooting for is something that feels kind of like, like I'm pressing into soft butter. Uh, that real tender, that good pork. So let me use both hands real quick. I'm going to take this off, set it to the side so I can get to that bottom one that probably is done already. All right. Now this one. Yeah. You can probably tell the flashing numbers in there saying it's 207 at some spots, but it's got some spots. Ooh, yeah. Some spots are a little tough. Some spots are nice and tender. Yeah, that's, that's like pushing into some melted butter right there. That's good stuff. So that one I'm actually going to pull. Um, it'll continue to cook over. Uh, as I put it in the cooler, I'm going to put it in the cooler. It's really going to be dressed up as a warmer because it's going to keep them warm, especially once all three of them in there. And then I'm not even going to unwrap these things until I get them over to my sister's house where I'll actually pull them there where she's feeding guests, things like that, instead of trying to do it here. All right, so finished up all the butts, uh, pulled them all off. They rested for about, it's been just over an hour. Um, I'm pulling out of my garage now, headed to my sister's house for the party. I'm gonna try and get some decent shots of what it looks like coming out of the foil. And of course, I'll get at least a, a good video or picture or two of what they actually look like once they're pulled. Got my uniform on, I'm heading out. All right, y'all, so this is the first one I've pulled out. Um, this is pretty much what it starts to look like when it's in there. You can see all the brown sugar and honey and everything is actually rendered down into basically a juice at this point. I'm going to leave it in this pan where I'm going to pull it. My niece, Hazel. And that's a goldfish named Goldie. But what this is going to do is when I pull this apart, I'm actually going to kind of toss all the meat in it so it gets a lot of that juiciness. Um, and it really is just going to help give that, that kind of flavor where like you don't really need a barbecue sauce unless you're looking for a specific flavor. Um, but just wanted to show you guys the first one naturally. I mean, everything just kind of falls right apart, which is pretty much what you're looking for when you're doing this backyard stuff. So this kind of stuff people are going to yeah. like. So this is it pulled out. You can see from the, the pink and it's pretty scattered throughout it. That was the smoke ring that was pretty good around the, the whole meat um, and that's about it if you notice it's kind of you can see the like juiciness of it that's good um, if you want to if you're serving anything with like a slotted spoon they can let some of that come out or if you're like me and that's delicious you just take it with it and it's fantastic super uh, super uh, juicy good flavor tastes great